finally got through customs or whatever they call it here. Got all our gun paperwork and everything done. So we're heading to our car now. We got to drive all day today. It's like 4 a.m. And uh, then drive some more tomorrow and then get to hiking. So. Starting to get into the real mountains now. We're still a long, long ways from where we'll be hunting ibex, but these are these are the big mountains. That uh, that right over there is Afghanistan, right across this river down here. So we're gonna stay on this side. <laughs> the camera or anything yet but I'm in Tajikistan and I've been traveling for like 45 or 46 hours straight I, I flew for about half of that I flew Colombia to Chicago to Istanbul to uh, Dushanbe and then picked them up or we were picked up by our um, interpreter and um, our contact and we've been driving non-stop since then like 22 hours just stopping like to use the bathroom at the police checks and to get food and we're finally here it's 3 a.m and this is our little room we're staying in tonight at our i guess our guest house and then tomorrow we hike up into the mountains to the the cabin or the huts that they have up in the mountains and depending on what we see at the first camp uh, we may hunt from there, shoot the guns, and then there's a second camp. I think each one's about seven or eight miles in. Um, we're in the Premier Mountains um, here with another fella uh, named Kevin. We didn't book together, we just met. Um, and so we're going to give it our all. We've got about a week or so to hunt and um, I'm ready to get after it. This is a hunt I've wanted to do for half of my life and it's it's been in the works for over three years i've had it booked and then covid messed it up and all kinds of stuff so it's finally happening and uh we're finally here it's an adventure just to get here with the roads and everything else but uh it should be a lot of fun stick around uh i know it's gonna be awesome all right guys we're getting ready to head out so we slept in that little house right there behind us last night. We couldn't see all these mountains when we got here, but we're getting ready to head up through this pass and get to go looking for Ibex. So they got some donkeys loaded up with our other gear. So my pack really isn't too heavy, about half or less than what it normally is. And we're going to head up and see what we see. So we're going up through that gap right there and taking that valley way i don't know probably about six or eight miles today and then six or eight more miles after today it's not too cold probably 15 or so oh look at the goats <laughs> so this is kevin he and i just met he's the other hunter and i think he's riding the yak <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna stick with these two fellows and let him ride the the yak. <laughs> yeah, it's a beast. That's what you need, man. Get rid of your horses and just get some donkeys. Donkey. Yeah, donkey. It's a Marco Polo up there. Some Ibex, that's a big one right there. Pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we're heading up into the mountains down there. That's the, the village. And then those mountains over there are actually Afghanistan. That's the Hindu Kush mountains. And we're going up that way. Here we go.
So we just saw our first Ibex of the trip right up, right up there. Oh, there's a hot spring right there. Yeah. So there were two big billies up there and about 10 total. So. so we're about four miles in now. We got to cross over this little bridge, go back up that way. And we have to our first camp, there's about three more miles, but they said we're going to try to go to the second camp today because that's where our guides are. And they hiked in yesterday and they already have some big ibex found so probably i don't know we might go 12 miles or so today we'll see how it all goes uh they said that that if you can see right there there's like lodging kind of in a cave where you see those rocks are built up and uh that's where poachers used to come in here and sleep spend the night and come in here and kill ibex illegally so that's it's kind of wild they don't do that anymore because now they have this um organization of people that uh, local folks like this that take care of the mountains and bring hunters in and uh, like me and Kevin down there and shoot ibex so it, it protects the ibex a lot uh, a lot more than the poachers coming in and just shooting whatever they could see whatever they could find riding a yak I said I'm riding a yak <laughs> I did hiked eight miles and I was feeling it with the elevation so broke down and <laughs> something uh, I was not expecting to ever say I had done so we finally made it in here we're uh, 11 miles in and uh, they gave us me and Kevin our own room which is kind of silly because there's like 12 people in here but uh <clears throat> made us like a spread of food and what I'm most happy about is there's a stove here I didn't know if there was going to be a stove so and uh they've got two groups of ibex spotted well you can't see it but up that way we are farming So the best I can tell, this is a pretty traditional Tajikistan breakfast. You have either tea or coffee and eggs. These are actually some snack sticks that the guy I'm hunting with brought. And then bread. There's literally bread at every single meal. Like every single one meal. And every breakfast, I've had eggs. This room that I'm staying in, these walls are concrete that have wood in between them. And then you can see that they put grass uh, in between the wood. And we're 11 miles in. And they built these houses to hunt out of. There's one at six miles, one at 11, and then I think there's another one at 16. And they just brought in the concrete by like donkey and yak. And then they, uh, same with the stove, and then they just built them back in here. So it's pretty, pretty neat setup. It's a cool little hut or cabin or house or, or whatever you want to call it in the mountains that we hunt or just right out the window there. So check this out guys, this is, they used to kind of, he called it a shrine, but when they would, there was a village that was all down in here like a couple hundred years ago. And you can kind of, it's hard to see from this angle, but there are these flat ridges that they carved out so they could plant wheat and stuff like that. And every time they would kill an ibex, they would put the head here as like respect to the animal and obviously eat the meat. So that's really cool. You can see right there, uh, those are a couple of guys I came up with this morning, but these, uh, these walls here were like old, uh, he said corrals for the whatever animals they had in here, goats or whatever. And uh, I imagine living in here a couple hundred years ago was a really rough, rough way to make a living, but they did it. That's really, really cool. Mm -hmm. Wow. 
Die Ehre. Ja, ja. Yeah. Okay. Yes? 100? Hm? Nein. No. No. I don't yes. know. He looks, no. he looks pretty good. No. Look. No. <laughs> I see. Why, Blair? No, no, no. One. I hit it. Oh, one short. Yes, yes, one yes, long. yes, yes. Oh. Yes, yes, yes. Going. Yeah, yeah. Go, yes? Yeah. So check this out guys, before they built the houses that are over there, the hunters that used to come here stayed in this. It's like a, a rock lodge and it had a fire in there and they would sleep on the side. How crazy is that? So it was just a, like a rock hut for hunters. That is wild stuff. I named this one Bruce and this one Bo. I don't know if they know that, but that's what I named it. And here's our little hut we stayed in. You see some Ibex up there on the top. <clears throat> and I'm going somewhere up over this way, which is massive, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. And I think Kevin's going back this way somewhere. It's big country. So we're excited. It was warm last night. We, uh, oh, they're glassing this way. So they must be up here somewhere. Hopefully out there on this side of the jagged rocks. Cause that would be amazing. Uh, should be good. It looks good. The country's really pretty. Uh, I'm excited. So the Ibex I'm going after are on that ridge right there. There's at least two up there. One of them looks pretty good. And I'm guessing that we're going to go up this way and around and probably try to shoot across there, but I'm not sure. I'm just going to kind of go where they're telling me. I might see if I can get the big camera on them pretty quick. Give me a up there. So that's the one we're going after right there. Okay guys, so there's another one right up there so there's two big ones so we're gonna try to go up i think this valley here and try to shoot across and if that's too far we'll go over to that one and shoot across there and hopefully it's a big one like that one that's a big old billy right there so we're getting ready to head out and uh hopefully we get some good footage and have an awesome hunt first challenge is getting across the creek here without falling through. So check that out. That's like a frozen creek or waterfall or something right there. That's pretty neat. And so I think the plan is we're gonna go up around this back here and then around over there to shoot that way at whichever one of the big ones they can find. I think they see three big ones. Now they're, uh, the houses right 
right there and they're using the spotting scopes to watch it and then we have a, a radio in there telling us where they are. So you can see the house all the way down there in the bottom right there and I think we're trying to figure out how to get up either up through here somehow or around this edge and then up the other side and they're still watching the ibex from below so they must still be there but uh these, big, these mountains are rough big big and rough it's pretty though so we just glassed up another one on the other side right there it's, it's pretty big they said they saw it yesterday we're over here part of the way up this side but uh, our guide right here said check the other side and we found this big one over there so i don't know what the plan is right now <laughs> so somewhere up above us are at least one or two ibex and the guys down there at camp are watching it's pretty chilly i got warm boots on but my toes are cold they can i feel like we're making pretty good time as long as you know they don't go running up the mountain or something so uh right now the guide is talking to the guys down at camp who have eyes on the ibex hopefully Hopefully we're getting close. When I ranged from the the little cabin down there, hut or house or whatever, I think it was 2,600 and it's about 1,200 now. But I mean, you just don't know where they move. So we should at least cut it in half at a minimum. Good. Good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, oh. Good. Getting close. We're gonna try to get behind this rock and then see if we can pick them out. So we're at the big rock, you see behind me, and they're looking around the corner. I don't know if they see it or not. They just borrowed my rangefinder though, so hopefully that means that they see the ibex. I don't know how far it is though, if they see it. They said it was a big one, so we'll see. There's two groups of ibex. They're at like a little under a thousand yards. So we're gonna cut the distance. I'm not shooting that far. We're gonna try to get to about 600 going up and around. There's one really nice one in there. So hopefully we can make it happen. Guys down at the bottom spotted three more. One big, two small. So we're working our way up this ridge and trying to get to about 600. And uh, the big one was bedded down sleeping, so. That'd be really good if we could sneak up there close. We're trying to locate that bedded ibex right now. He's jumped that way. Okay. 
いもしかない。Mani arum na arum na. Oh, sabun ek. Ini je snow gumi. Yes, yes, ini je snow. In the snow. Ini dah nos dia ni, pasti begini. Yes, just got an ibex. <laughs> Congratulations! <laughs> you can see all the ibex leaving now that we shot. Yes, ibex. That's pretty cool. He was uh, right up there, and it was 650, or maybe a little over 650. And I shot, and they ran back this way, and I was trying to get a second shot. And then all we could see was the small one, and down there at the bottom, they saw he fell. It's steep and it's starting to snow. And there's probably about six inches of snow down here too. Struggles are real. <laughs> you can see the ibex still been walking all through here. Still going up. Well guys, he's right there in that valley. Mm -hmm. That's right, right there. I'm about to go get him. Guys, it's hard to explain what this ibex means. I've, I've wanted to come hunting for ibex for close to half my life. And um, I booked the hunt over three years ago and it took a lot of saving and planning and to come all the way around the world and all the training I do with my legs and practicing shooting to, to shoot an ibex. and we're not up to it yet, but it looks in the binoculars like it's a really good one. So to shoot an awesome Ibex and make a good shot, it's just, it's like a dream come true. So I'm excited to walk up and put my hands on it. And it's just, it's just unbelievable. And not to mention, I'm sure you guys have heard this, but Pamir Mountains are no joke. Like they're known as the roof of the world. And this is the most rugged mountain range, just like pure rock. And obviously there's a little vegetation here and there. And in the, in the spring and summer, they say there's obviously a lot more green, but it's just a gnarly mountain range. So I'm gonna go up here and put my hands on this thing. There he is, guys. How cool is that? How old? old how old? Age? Eight, yes, eight. Karachi. Eight. eight and a half? Yes. Yeah, it's an eight and a half year old yes. building. Perfect. Pretty, pretty solid shot. And he's, uh, we actually just had tape measure. He's 40 inches. I'm really happy. Oh my gosh. That's so cool. This is how they get an ibex down on off the mountain. You get it in a valley, you just slide it down with the snow. <laughs> it's working pretty well. So they just told me that that's a snow leopard track. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool indeed. We were all the way up there. It's a lot bigger than it looks. And it looks big. So we got a little weather this morning, but 
I'm just gonna show you guys. So we went yesterday up like through here and I shot from, I think right in here somewhere. And the Ibex was over here and he fell down in that valley. Here's the crazy thing. You can see how high that mountain is. There's actually, the mountain goes up more that way and how high this one is. Where I shot my Ibex right there was 13,200 feet or a little over that, you know, 13.3, something like that. I've hunted that high in Colorado, but just like crossing over a ridge or something, but it was always at the top. Here, I mean, there's another, I bet up there, three or 4,000 feet above where I shot my Ibex. That's how big these mountains are. It's pretty, pretty crazy. <clears throat> so here's my Ibex and here's Kevin's. His is uh, 10 years old and it's, uh, I think it's 105 centimeters, which is like uh, 42 and a half or so. And mine, his is 10 years old, and mine's nine years old and right at 100 centimeters, so it's uh, 40 inches. So his is a year older with a couple more inches, but they're both really good at Ibex because all the guys are here saying they're really good. So we're both pretty happy with them. Boiling the heads to take them home. Looks good. going on guys i hope you enjoyed that video it was hard to capture everything that went along with that hunt there's just so much that goes into a hunt like that but it met every expectation i had i'd wanted to hunt ibex for so long that i can't even remember really when i didn't want to hunt them and it just lived up to every expectation sometimes you go on hunts and whether it's a diy hunt or i don't really do much guided hunt but it's a guided hunt you know sometimes they're just not as difficult as other times sometimes they're brutally difficult sometimes they're not as difficult and sometimes guided hunts you know they're fun and you enjoy them but they're not really that demanding physically or mentally this hunt had all those things those mountains are unbelievably massive like the average mountain there is 18,000 up to 25,000 feet and i've seen like all the mountains in the United States and some overseas and I've seen them up in Alaska. These mountains are unbelievable. Like Mount Everest is like 250 miles away from here, just to give you an idea. I mean, they're insane. And these Ibex just live there year round. Like obviously they go up or down depending on the weather, but they live there year round. They're unbelievable animals. And the people there were kind people. They look out for you no matter what, you know, obviously there were some dangerous situations just because it's a mountain hunt, like a real hunt, but they did everything they could to make sure you were safe and, and took care of you. And one thing I really wanted to talk about real quick was the company that I hunted with was ANCOT, A-N-C-O-T, and I'll link them down below. The cool thing about this is a lot of hunts, especially international hunts, there's like a middleman um, for this type of hunt, maybe not some hunts like New Zealand and stuff, but a lot of times hunts like this, there's a middleman and that's just how it is. Like businesses are like that. This hunt, there's nothing like that. Like you book through them, through their website, which I'll link below or through bookyourhunt.com, which I think is Jim Shockey's like website that guides and outfitters can list their hunts on. So you book your hunt right there and the money just all goes to them. So the guy that's in the city helping you get all your paperwork and um, permits to hunt, get your gun in the country and get you in the country and hunt that area. He has a salary, your interpreter, your driver, even the people in the village have jobs and, and make money off the hunts that like they didn't have jobs and make money off before. Poaching is basically non-existent in these areas now because the animals have value. The, the numbers of animals is really intense. Like we saw tons and tons of Ibex and they said there were only like six hunters in there this whole year. So they're not over hunting. There's, there's, they're not endangered animal and none of that stuff. It's just a 
an awesome store or conservation story that shows what hunting can do when it's done correctly and they are doing it correctly. So I'm going to link them below. If you're interested in doing a hunt like this, you should do it. It had everything. It had uh, mental stuff. You had to be at a, you had to be in good shape. My legs held up great. You have to be at a shoot. You need to be uh, able to be accustomed to some travel because there was intense amount of travel to get where we had to go. But overall, it was just an unbelievable hunt. Make sure to stick around here in just a couple seconds. And I'm going to put a uh, like, compilation of pictures because I took some awesome pictures that I wanted to put in here at the end. So make sure to stick around the end and watch those. And uh, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, think about doing it. And uh, if you like hunting videos and stuff like that. So awesome hunt awesome company, just crazy experience and something to check off my bucket list. And I don't know if I'll ever go back to Tajikistan or hunt Ibex again. I might, I might not. I don't know what the future holds, but if I don't, it would go back. Uh, it was an unbelievable experience. And if I do go back, I know I'll enjoy it. So I really appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you on the next one.